Yeah, hi, my name is uh, Kyle Little. I'm from Barrie, Ontario. I'm uh, here in Edwards, Ontario today doing uh, an EcoNest workshop. So there's a, a group of people here that's working under the direction of Bobby Ilg, who's an architect from Ottawa, and Robert Laporte, who is the, uh, I guess, one of the uh, owners of EcoNest, based out of uh, Ashland, Oregon. And we are working on phase one of a roughly 2,000 square foot EcoNest uh, clay straw home that is being constructed in downtown Ottawa. Um, Bobby told us that it's actually the first permitted natural construction uh, to be approved in downtown Ottawa. So it's a bit of a precedent setting project in that way. Um, well, what, what I heard was that it was all natural construction. So I don't know to what extent that's true, but um, that's, that's what the building inspectors were telling him. It was a first, yeah. Um, that may just be purely for residential or maybe it's residential and commercial. I'm not 100% I'm not on the facts there, but uh, yeah, my background, uh, I've been in residential construction for about a decade. Um, doing a range of things. Originally, I started, um, I studied at George Brown College in Toronto in their building renovation technician program and graduated with honors from that in 2006. Um, immediately afterwards, I moved out to Vancouver and I worked out there for about four and a half, five years doing high-end residential construction predominantly in uh, North and West Vancouver. Um, then my spouse and I moved back to Ontario, um, partially for family, partially because the land is significantly more affordable here, um, and bought a house in Barrie. And I've spent the last uh, three and a half years working as a project manager for Normerica Timber Frame, which has been uh, really enjoyable and a very kind of educational experience. It's my um, it's my first kind of uh, um, experience, I guess, getting into heavy timber construction. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't have anything anything negative to say about that experience. Uh, but personally, for me, I guess I I was looking for. Um, something with a more kind of natural, uh, sustainable, ecologically friendly approach to make the, to, br to, to bring it full circle and make the whole um, experience more palatable for me. I enjoy the work, but I want it to be, um, I guess, spiritually nourishing, nur nurturing at the same time that it is uh, kind of physically and mentally satisfying. Um, I guess I just want to be a more well-rounded person. I want to um, I want to have a, a feeling of wholeness and satisfaction at the end of the day when I come home to know that um, I put in a good a good day's work and we accomplished something but at the same time that what we're doing is uh, is you know, with a, a long-term vision and, and some sustainability integrated into it um, with a mind for future generations. And yeah, it's, it's just a, it's a value that's important to me and I think should be significantly more important to the greater population. Have you met Bobby? Uh, Bobby's a great guy. We met originally at a, an EcoNest workshop in Gravenhurst, Ontario which I believe was in the fall of 2015, so not all that long ago. Um, I was there for an intensive three-week course with Robert, and Bobby came to study clay straw walls with the intention of uh, integrating that into his um, architectural approach for future projects. And uh, so we made a connection there, and I guess shortly after that, Bobby determined that he wanted to build a home for his family using that same technology in Ottawa. 
after he reached out to me and Robert Laporte uh, to say, you know, let's kind of stoke the fire and put, put some plans in motion. And we all decided unanimously that it would make sense to um, follow up on the Gravenhurst experience by doing some additional training. And fortunately for Bobby and I, the um, kind of the next available workshop that we could participate in was in California, which is not not a bad place to spend a couple of weeks if you're doing natural building. So we traveled out there together for, uh, I guess, about a week and a half and, um, you know, shared shared transportation and accommodation and built a, a stronger bond between the two of us and started making some solid plans for this Ottawa project that we're working on now. So when did you start? Um, when did you pick up your job? My, my job is a bit of a, a – I've got a few different hats, I guess I should say, I'm wearing. I'm a, kind of a lead hand assistant um, supporting Robert and Bobby. I'm also uh, assisting with some of the instruction. I'm doing a little bit of uh, project management and coordination to try and help keep things on track and make sure that we have the right equipment and the right uh, materials on hand to uh, to get the day's work done and look forward to the next uh, next few days or the week to come. And uh, yeah, I mean it's it's kind of equal parts of all of those things. Yeah, um, Robert Laporte is uh, a lifelong student of natural construction. He's really dedicated himself to um, to learning through trial and error, and um, I'm really grateful to him and people like him that kind of uh, blaze the trail, right? There's a lot of his uh, passion and blood, sweat, and tears, and same goes for his wife, Paula. Um, they've, they've dedicated a lot of their time to uh, kind of rediscovering and documenting and um, trying to advance and, and share and perpetuate this knowledge and, uh, and work to establish it, I guess, um, and make it compatible with, um, I'll say, mainstream or more conventional uh, thinking in the construction industry, so working to bridge the gap between what is considered by some to be a fringe technology um, and trying to integrate that into the, uh, I guess, common, common frame of thought for uh, residential and commercial construction. Well, it's all natural, so I don't have to wear a hazmat suit, which is always a bonus. I think if you have to suit up in a white suit with goggles and a mask before you uh, insulate a wall or, um, yeah, I mean, there's a that's a pretty strong indicator that what you're working with, maybe if it's not safe to build with, maybe it's not safe to live in either. So um, I really like that, that all of the materials are natural. Whenever possible, they're also uh, locally sourced, and um, they're just friendly to work with. So um, that, for me, kind of adds a little bit of a, um, a spiritual aspect to it. I'm not, you know, I'm not an overly religious person, but uh, I think um, working with natural materials and uh, and building houses that are going to nurture the planet and nurture the occupant and nurture the builder, uh, it's kind of critical. And I think that's a, that's a strong, indi strong indication that, um, that we're kind of moving in the right direction, even if uh, in this case that means kind of uh, readopting some technologies that have been sort of lost over the last, you know, century or more because of the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. Did, 
think it's, you know, you may marginal or are there signs that it's going to be widely adopted? Um, yeah, my, my hope and my intention is that it needs to be more widely adopted and not necessarily specifically Econest, but I mean, there's, there's dozens of different forms of natural building and they all have, uh, they all have, you know, good intentions and some, some good ideas that are happening. And it's kind of like, uh, think, think or swim, right? I mean, we're at a tipping point in society and I mean, we can either adapt or we can relinquish the planet back to, uh, the plants and animals and close the chapter on, you know, homo sapiens. I don't think we have really too many other choices to make it work or, or it's not going to be going on for too much longer. Thank you.